There's an effort underway to preserve a piece of Minneapolis history that many people may not even know about. As Boyd Hooper shows us, it involves a building with a painful past that people want saved for future generations. In one of those buildings, we pass by, but don't necessarily see it. History is ever so quietly simmering. It's a big day. A new day for the old building at 45th and Hiawatha. This is an amazing opportunity. And for the African-American firefighters. Long time coming. Following in others' footsteps. The old staircase, that's all original. More than a century has passed since the building they are seeing for the first time all right. was built to be Minneapolis's first and ultimately only all black fire station. It opened in 1907. Joseph Waters is the firefighting historian who's been doing the research on the men who served here. Oscar Clark, Archie Spence, and James Cannon. Just three found in the records so far. Served this station their entire career. But Joseph says potentially dozens of African Americans worked and lived in this space over the 34 years Station 24 was open. They broke the ground for us. Charles Rucker joined the Minneapolis Fire Department 21 years ago. This is what we would be called the engine. Where he's risen to the rank of fire motor operator. If the system is in place how it was back in the day, I would have been the one in control of the horses. This area is the day area. On a tour of Charles Fire Station. This is uh, where we eat our lunch, dinner. Reminders of another time. This is my room here. When white firefighters refused to sleep in the same beds occupied by black firefighters during the shifts before them. That's why there was a segregated black uh, fire station. And when that station closed in 1941, things got worse. Basically, since this station closed, there weren't African Americans on the Minneapolis Fire Department for almost a 30-year period. Retired Judge Lejeune Lang should know. Yeah. She worked as a young volunteer paralegal in the early 70s on the federal lawsuit that forced the Minneapolis Fire Department to open its hiring process to minorities. That hole up there represents where the first fire pole was. Now she's organized this tour hmm. and taken the lead on gaining historical status for the old fire station to protect it from demolition as the neighborhood redevelops around it. These are the original boot lockers. John Bean, that the fireman would use. who currently owns the building he leases to others, Captain's room. is supportive of the effort to preserve it, as is. This is the basement. The Minneapolis African American Professional Firefighters Association, yep. of which Charles Rucker is president. This is very emotional because they paved the way for us to be on the job and have these nice careers that we're having so we can raise our families and serve the community. Backers envision a museum where children can visit. We just seen y'all and we wanted to say hey. Like these kids from a neighborhood summer program who just happened to walk by during the firefighters tour. You can also become a, a, a paramedic. Another rung on the ladder helping the next generation up. I am actually assistant chief of okay. administration. Give it up for yeah. Okay. Progress. Honor God. Still being built brick by brick. One, two, three. On a strong foundation. Thank you for coming. Boyd Hoopert, Care 11 News, Minneapolis. Today, 62 black men and women are among 403 Minneapolis firefighters, including the city's fire chief, Brian Tyner. In North Dakota, it got its state fruit back in 2007, thanks to a request by a group of Williston Elementary School students. They've been known ever since as the Choke Cherry Kids. What began as a simple, persuasive writing project turned into learning how a bill becomes a law. The students spent more than a year working to make the Choke Cherry North Dakota state fruit. Now there's an annual festival that honors their accomplishments. I just want it to be a learning lesson or a teaching lesson for like kids that their voice does matter, you know, putting in the time and effort like we did, we studied up on it, like, oh, yeah, kids can make an impact too, you know. The two day festival continues tomorrow at Spring Lake Park. The FM Redhawks back on the road up next in sports. Devin has highlights as they tangled with the Canaries. <laughs> 